I think for a lot of people, a lot of the experiences that you have during your teenage years are things that you won't ever forget, and they were kind of pivotal experiences and moments in your life. Those are some of the most amazing years of your life that I didn't get to have. That time in prison took so many experiences away from me. Christy convinced me to confess at her mother's house. That's when she told me that she was the one who had, who had killed Joey. She started telling me things like, I need you to take the blame for it. I need you to do this. You're 13, nothing will happen to you. They don't punish children. Nothing's gonna happen to you. And of course, me, who never as much been sent to the principal's office before, believed her. Christy was the only connection that I had to my father's family. As far as I was concerned, you know, she practically walked on water. And so I agreed. Okay, this is, uh, my name is James Lindsay, and this is Officer Shannon Williams. We were the Octavio County Sheriff's Department, and your name is Tyler Edmund, is that right? Yes, sir. And you're age 13? Yes, sir. The cops initially called my mom and said, hey, we need to talk to Tyler. They asked my mother to step out of the room, and then another investigator slides in the room when they've got her occupied and he's holding up papers in his hand, flashing in my face saying, we already know that you did this. Christy told us all about it. After I said, I don't believe you, I don't believe you, they go and get Christy and bring Christy in who's in an orange jumpsuit and handcuffs. Those pressures combined just broke me and that's when I said, okay, I'll tell you. Well, I mean, you can talk to him with me here. Do you know what you, I mean, you're telling him the truth, right? Okay, what well, is the truth? Oh, There are so many facets, I guess, of, of prison life that you can't really understand unless you've lived it. There are things that I saw and experienced that I don't think any child should ever have to experience. I'll never forget the first time that I visited with him was shortly after the conviction and he was crying and when I went to leave, he was, he was screaming, Mama, please don't leave me here. It was horrible. That was horrible. But I knew I would be back. My mother, that is one of the toughest women that I know, I knew that she would never give up. Tyler's defense was, was pretty expensive, but I had retired from my job and I had a 401k. I had liquidated everything I had and I'll be in debt for the rest of my life. But I will be fine, and I would do it all over again. It was all about saving my child's life, and when you go to save your child's life, what is your child's life worth? What is your child's life worth? She lost five and a half years of her life, too. Every court proceeding, she was there. Every visitation, she was there. And. I owe my life to that woman. I can still hear the voice of the court clerk, we the jury, find the defendant, and there was this traumatic pause, not guilty, and I just fell apart. I mean, it was like having a parked car on top of you and it just, and someone breathed life back into you. There's a Rascal Flatts song that's called I'm Moving On. And part of the lyrics in that song are that I never dreamed home would end up where I don't belong. And that's kind of how I feel 
about Mississippi is I love Mississippi, but because I think that the only thing that the people there will ever allow me to be is that 13 year old who went to prison, I don't belong there. I don't feel like I have a place there. I told him, you probably need to go somewhere where they don't know the notoriety of the, the case and you can make a fresh beginning. And that's what he did. He went to Florida. Considering that my mom literally gave up everything that she had, you know, her life, her house, her husband, her financial security, getting the compensation from the state means everything to me in the sense that it is my opportunity to say, let me help you in a way that I probably won't ever have the opportunity to do otherwise. For people who say or believe that the state didn't do anything wrong, the investigators and the district attorney took advantage of my age and my naivety and used that to benefit themselves in the form of maybe being able to say that they solved the case. You don't take advantage of children. I don't care what your reasonings are. You know, you don't do that to a child. For some reason, money seems to get their attention. And if for no other reason, at least they know that I didn't just roll over, that I stood up for myself. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.